Welcome to our virtual Women's Day event. My name is Christina Luna and I'm a wellness case manager. This video is dedicated to all the beautiful women out there. We would like to promote the importance of women's health. So if you have any questions that you would like further information, please feel free to call me at 520-884-7131 extension 2229 or you can email me at cluna at TICenter.org. And please don't forget to register because the first 200 people will receive an incentive for joining us today. Thank you and enjoy the video. Hello, today I will be talking about preventing breast cancer. What is breast cancer? Breast cancer is a type of cancer that starts in the breast. Cancer starts when cells begin to grow out of control. Breast cancer cells usually form a tumor that can often be seen on an x-ray or felt as a lump. Breast cancer can start from different parts of the breast. Most breast cancer begin in the ducts that carry milk to the nipple. Some start in the glands that make breast milk. A small number of cancers start in other tissues in the breast. These cancers are called sarcomas and lymphomas and are not really thought of as breast cancer. Although many types of breast cancer can cause a lump in the breast, not all do. Many breast cancer are found on a screaming mammograms and can also be felt before symptoms develop. Why should you get mammograms? First of all, Breast cancer is one of the most common types of cancer among women. Early detection means more treatment options. When breast cancer is found at its earliest stage, treatment has the greatest chance of su success. Take charge of your health. The signs and symptoms of breast cancer. Symptoms, irritated or itchy breast, change in breast color, increase in breast size or shape, Changes in touch, it may feel hard, tender, or warm. Peeling or flaking of the nipple skin, a breast lump or thickening, redness or pitting of the breast skin. Signs, skin changes such as swelling, redness, or visible difference in one or both breasts. An increase in size or change in shape of the breast. Changes in the appearance of one or both nipples, nipple discharge other than breast milk, general pain in or on any part of the breast, lumps or nodes felt on or inside of the breast. What can we be done to reduce the risk of breast cancer? Limit alcohol, maintain a healthy weight, be physically active, breastfeed, limit postmenopausal hormone therapy, and don't use tobacco. Annual mammograms can be done at IHS Pima County Health Department, El Rio, etc. Please contact your physician today to schedule an appointment. Take a deep breath in, stretch, and then it out. Again, in your mouth. No, I'm sorry, it was in your nose and out your mouth. Again, deep breath in your nose. Shoulder rolls forward, two, three, four, and five, and back, two, three, five, and hold your neck up as you're doing it, you feel the difference, and forward, don't forget to breathe, and back. Do 
some neck rolls, just forward and back, um, side to side. So we'll do it slowly. Two. And breathe as you're doing it. Five more. going to do some knee highs. you can sometimes you can't do it because if you're not used to doing it you could pull a muscle but all right now take one deep breath in and let it out all right we're gonna do some lunges so you want to put one knee forward and the other one back and just go down as far as you can. Don't, I can't go too far down, so I'm just gonna do what I can. So we'll hold it to the count of five. One, two, three, four, five, up. Then we'll go the other side. One, two, three, four, five, up. Switch to the other side and one, two, three, four, five. Other side, and one, two, three, four, five. And one more time, and two, three, four, five. Other side, they can go down further than I can. That's okay, <laughs> do what you can. All right. Um, I don't know if uh, you guys are able to balance on one leg. Hard for me to balance. Okay. I can try. Um, but if you can, 
and put one leg up and put it like towards your butt as long as as far as you can see this one i can't do too well but you can try so that's another way of stretching your your muscles here and your yeah so and uh a lot of times we don't balance ourselves so if you're ever at a bank or whatever at a store you can always just put your hands up and try to yeah or balance some people can do one leg better than the other because they're more um, dominant but the more you practice it the better you get at it so just a just a little thing i wanted to let you know that balance is really important but Anyway, um, we're gonna do some wrist rolls. One, two, three, four, five, and the other way. Yeah, a lot of times too, we are at the computers too long, especially with the virtual learning that you guys have been doing. Um, we need to kind of exercise our wrist. So now hold your fist and open your fingers, stretch them out back and forth close open close and open because we don't exercise our fingers especially when they're at the that you're at the computer and just you know doing repetitive motions it's good to exercise your fingers and it feels really good if you do it this way it's even different you're using these muscles now so turn them over Breathe while you're doing it. Yeah. So yeah. All right. So there you go. Just a few stretches you can do um, in the morning, noon and night if you want. And exercise helps you sleep better. So with that, um, just want to share. I just wanted to share a few uh, stretching exercises with you. So um, I will be doing some other things in, in a little bit. So uh, stay tuned. Put your hands on your chair and put your back up. And we're going to kick one foot and then the other. Okay. So one. I don't know if you guys can feel it in your back. Strength is your back. As long as you keep your posture up straight. Okay, now we're going to switch it to both. Two, three. And while you're doing this, try to uh, hold, your abs in. hold your abs in. Hmm? <laughs> jelly, jelly rolls. <laughs> See how you have to concentrate <laughs> in and out. Kind of takes a minute to get it together, especially at an elder age. Hey, eh? <laughs> and forward. Ooh. I'm getting hot already for you guys. <laughs> All right. Ooh. So 
So put your legs up and then out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Don't forget to hold your abs in. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. How was that? That's right. <laughs> I can feel my lower back. Yeah, but is it helping your back or? Yeah. Yeah, because um, that strengthens your back muscles. And if you used to slouching a lot, you need to remind yourself to keep your, your back straight. So now we're gonna hold one knee up for a bit. Two, three, four, five. Now the other one. And switch. Try to keep that foot, uh, opposite foot off the floor. Oh. What? Um, but keep it bent. So hold one up and it's it, it puts more work on you to do. Now do the other one. Because if you put it on the floor, you can kind of like feel the difference. And the other side. side. Don't forget to breathe. Get some oxygen in that blood. Okay, now what we're going to do, kind of scoot out of your chair a little bit. And we're going to, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Woo. Okay, deep breath. That one was hard. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it again. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Deep breath in. Let it out. And let's do it one more time. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Woo, that felt so good. See how hard it can also be with chair exercises? Yeah. And it gives you the support and everything, but you know, especially if you're out, you don't have good balance, you can do that as you can. So, kind of scoot your bottom to half of the seat, and then go back, and then we're gonna do a bicycle. And we'll go put some arms to it. And just go as long as you can. You might not be able to do it that long because we did a few guy things. Um, so, it's like you're ready to bite. <laughs> I know once you all start laughing, it's it's starting to. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're gonna go up and down and yeah. Woo. <laughs> Riding a bike because you're using basically almost the same muscles, you're just not outside moving it physically. But yeah, did you guys like that one? Yes. <laughs> Let's do it again. One, two, three, take a deep breath in, let it out, and bicycle. Woohoo! As long as you can do it. Once you can't do it anymore, just stop. Don't push yourself too much because you could also hurt yourself pushing it. You can go fast or slow as you want. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, I felt that right here. It felt so good. Yeah. It's cool, huh? I, I I don't know what I prefer, but um, chair exercises and I do the other. But I mean, they all do the same thing because you guys can feel it. And I'm so I'm just doing this. <laughs> Huh? Me too. <laughs> so, let's put her um, back straight. And we're going to just go out and in and up. Down, out, in, up, down.
exercise our bones they can get stronger because we can fall and break a bone really quick if our bones are strong especially as we're getting older stop that's that's what you need to do so let's just tap our feet tapping causes the red bone marrow the red blood cells to start moving and it regenerates your blood and all the oxygen that you flow through so just even stomping blood flow in there so that can cause you know a lot of um, circulation in our feet because people who have diabetes sometimes that that's where they start losing mints your toes and goes up so if you can get your blood flow going in your feet the more you just sitting there just tap your feet yeah that that's even a workout So, with that, let's get up and we can still use our prayers. Because some people aren't able to, aren't able to um, balance. So, I'm going to just put it this way so I can show them. <clears throat> I'm going to go like this, okay? So, one, two, three, four, we'll do ten, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and then we just turn around and do the other side. Okay, ready, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and again, turn around, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, turn around, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, so now we'll hold on to our chairs and do lunges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Other side. can do them just like this but if you can't just do it with your chair so let's do five one two three four and five deep breath in and out let's do five more squats one two three four and five Deep breath in and out, and five more. One, two, three, four, and five. All right. Yeah. So, is that okay? Yeah. All right. Let's just take a deep breath in. Let it out. Again. So, you know, once you get some cardio going, 
you want to kind of take a um, first you have to have a warm up then the cardio and then kind of like a cool down that's what I'm trying to say so we're just going to kind of like cool down for a minute here and we're just going to do some squats go up and take a deep breath in as we're doing it and then we're going to let it out okay so ready and deep breath in and up again and up These can also be done in the chair. This way. Okay. Put our hands through. And then we're going to go this way. Two, three, four, five. Middle and two. going to put our hands out and just go five and then the opposite side one two three four five Okay, I'm gonna do something that I learned in a yoga class, and it really helps you release a lot of uh, bad energy, okay? So, you go up and down like this, like you're swinging back and forth, okay? So, one, two, and then, ha! <laughs> it really helps. So, we'll go one, Two, and then at the third one, ha! Okay. Oh, it feels good already. Ready, and one, two, and ha! Oh my God, that just feels so great. It just, it just feels good to just like scream or howl or whatever, howl. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. I just enjoyed it too much, I think. One, two, then that, I mean, it just feels good. Um, I did that yesterday when I was riding the bike. I was going down the road and just yelled, ah! And it's like, ah, oh, felt so good. Yeah, so we're just gonna take a few seconds here and I'm just gonna put this music down and just concentrate with the music. Just let your body hang. back and forth.
loose and swing back and forth. Ovarian Cancer, presented by the Tucson Indian Center Wellness Department. What is ovarian cancer? Ovarian cancer is a type of cancer that begins in the ovaries. The female reproductive system contains two ovaries, one on each side of the uterus. The ovaries are each about the size of an almond. They produce eggs, as well as the hormone estrogen and progesterone. Ovarian cancer often goes undetected until it has spread within the pelvis and the abdomen. What are the risk factors of ovarian cancer? Women 40 to 60 years of age, having a close family history of ovarian cancer, having a previous cancer diagnosis, having a diagnosis of endometriosis, having previous complications with your reproductive health. What are the symptoms of ovarian cancer? Symptoms of ovarian cancer include vaginal bleeding or discharge that is not normal, pain or feeling pressure in the pelvic area, abdominal or back pain, bloating, feeling full too quickly or difficulty eating, a change in your bathroom habits like constipation or frequent urination. How to screen for ovarian cancer. If you notice any changes in your body that are not normal, make, your, make an appointment with your doctor to discuss these changes. Screenings work when they find the disease early before there are symptoms. Diagnostic testing is performed when there are symptoms present. A pap smear test does not check for ovarian cancer. It does check for cervical cancer. There is no simple or reliable way to screen for ovarian cancer, so it is important to know the signs and symptoms. A few diagnostic testings available are a pelvic exam, an ultrasound, CAT scan, biopsy, 
or a CA25 blood test. Again, the symptoms of ovarian cancer are vaginal bleeding or discharge that is not normal, pain or feeling pressure in the pelvic area, abdominal or back pain, bloating, feeling full too quickly or difficulty eating, a change in your bathroom habits like constipation or frequent urination. How is ovarian cancer treated? Treatment for ovarian cancer includes surgery and chemotherapy. Surgery removes the cancerous tissue. Chemotherapy uses medication to shrink or kill the cancer. The medication can come in a pill form or put in intravenously or both. You and your doctor can discuss what treatment will work best for you. Ovarian cancer is not completely preventable. Knowing your body and any abnormal changes is a key factor to getting the help that is needed. If you notice any abnormal changes, schedule an appointment with your doctor or request to see a gynecology oncologist, which is a doctor who is trained to treat cancers in a woman's reproductive system. Ask your doctor if you should have a diagnostic test, which could be a rectal vaginal pelvic exam, a transvaginal ultrasound, or a CA125 blood test. Remember to be good to yourself and listen to your body. Thank you for listening. So good afternoon everybody um, and welcome to well, uh, Women's Wellness Day. Uh, my name is Drew Harris. I am the Community Cultural Specialist here at the Tucson Indian Center. And today I'm going to be sharing with you um, what infused waters are, some of the health benefits, and what we're going to be using in our, um, our version of that. Um, so to begin, why would you drink infused waters? Well, really there's a lot of health benefits um, being that it, it makes water more appealing. You know, we all need water. I think it was about eight cups a day that we all should be drinking. So sometimes, you know, I know I don't always drink my allotted amount. So um, infusing water, which basically means mixing um, uh, herbs or, or fruits into your water, um, it kind of makes me want to drink it more. So saying that, you know, it, it provides a lot of low calories. Um, because you're not, you know, it's a substitute from maybe you're drinking soda or maybe a lot of coffee. Um, so it's a good substitute for that. Um, it's a low sugar, low calorie drink. And so um, in our version, what we're going to be using um, is lavender, mint, rosemary, and thyme. Now, you can also use uh, lemon and strawberry strawberry and basil, uh, watermelon and mint, cucumber and mint, uh, you could get really creative. Um, but what we're going to be sharing with you are some of the health benefits of what we actually pick from our own community garden. And um, so that's what we have here. So I'll start off with rosemary. Um, so in our mix, uh, you can kind of see it here. Um, we are going to be providing you guys with infused water bottles. This is not one of them. I'll put uh, an infused water bottle picture up on the video here. Uh, to kind of give you a demonstration, but you could really use whatever water bottle you want um, We're using this one. Normally. There's like a little cage inside where you can put all these herbs herbs in there um, but um, So you can see what we got going on there. So Starting off we got rosemary now rosemary for this is a good mix of a uh, It's a great stress and anxiety re reducer also a great immunity and uh, booster, which we all kind of need with this whole COVID situation. You know, we want to make sure that our, our uh, immune system is, is up. Um, so this is a great uh, source of that. 
It's also a great source of iron, which is good for your blood um, regulation and blood health. Um, next we have mint. Um, and so with mint, this is a classic uh, stomach soother. Um, you know, they, they do it a lot of teas. You could do it, I love it in water. It just gives it that nice fresh taste to it. Um, and then it's also a great source of vitamin A, which uh, helps with your vision. Uh, so next we have uh, lavender, which uh, is my favorite. Um, you know, it, it, it's a classic uh, stress and anxiety reducer. Um, also rich in antioxidants, which again, boosts your immune system, which is really important right now with the virus going around. You know, the lower your immune system, the more likely you are to uh, be susceptible to, to a virus. Um, so we don't want that. So we gotta uh, make sure we put plenty of antioxidants and exercise um, uh, as much as you can. So um, saying that, uh, you can also just use this and uh, put it underneath your pillow, maybe put it in a small baggie. Um, and maybe put it under your pillow. You have essential oils with this stuff. Um, same with rosemary, uh, just great uh, stress reducers. Um, so next and lastly, what we have in our mix today is thyme. Um, now thyme is uh, actually a great antibacterial um, and it helps with vision and um, it also helps you with uh, your, it has great, so it's a great source of iron as well. So again, you're gonna get that, um, that uh, assistance with your blood uh, regulation and all that good stuff. So, um, so yeah, so after you decide whatever you're gonna put in your water, like I said, it could be lemon, it could be strawberry, basil, whatever you're gonna do, um, you wanna just let it sit, um, not too long. Uh, I would say no more than 12 hours. After that, you're good to go nice refreshing um little mix here and yeah uh enjoy plenty of so uh again we will be sending you guys uh everybody a infused water bottle so i hope you uh, take advantage of it and use it um and if you have a small um, community garden or if you go out looking for some of these things or even buy it in the grocery store um yeah, just put it to great use you know a lot of the things we showed you today can actually be used in cooking as well um, so not only can you have it in your drink, but you can also use it as a great source of uh, uh, health benefits to boost your food as well. Um, so with that, um, have a great rest of your women's day. My name is Maricela Sanchez, and I'm the program coordinator for the Well Woman Health Check program at the Pima County Health Department. Well Woman Health Check focuses on improving health care for women of our community. We strive to make it easier for women to get high quality cancer screening and diagnostic services when they need it. Working with women who are uninsured or underinsured, we offer breast cancer screening for those ages 40 to 64 and cervical cancer screenings for ages 21 to 64. We can help you with no-cost routine clinical breast exams, mammograms, pap smears, pelvic exams, and other diagnostic testing services. Our program goal is early detection. Early detection recommendations for breast cancer screenings include routine clinical breast exams every three years for women in their 20s and 30s, and yearly for women 40 and older. Mammograms every year for women 40 and older, and lastly, regular breast self-exams for women of all ages. You know your body best. Contact your physician if you experience any changes. Early detection recommendations for cervical cancer screenings include regular pap smears and HPV tests. HPV is a virus that can cause various types of cancer in both men and women. Women ages 21 to 29 should be tested every three years. And those ages 30 to 65 should be tested every five years. You may be eligible for the program. If you're a resident of Arizona, there is breast or cervical cancer in your family, you have a history of cancer, or you are experiencing any symptoms. Early detection of breast or cervical cancer saves thousands of lives each year. Contact the Pima County Health Department if you have any questions about our program 
or visit wellwomanhealthcheck.org for more information. Hello everyone, my name is Dylan Baisa. I'm a proud member of the Choctaw Tribe of Oklahoma and a community health representative here at Tucson Indian Center with the Health Services Department. Our main focus at the Health Services Department is to provide COVID-19 support. Uh, we do this in a couple ways. Uh, one of the main ways is providing access to uh, both testing and vaccinations. You can always reach out to us and we can connect you with those services. And then the third is providing uh, care packages to help you stay safe uh, during COVID. Um, you only need a couple things to get started with your intake with Health Services Department. Uh, this will include a state-issued ID with a Pima County address on it, as well as a tri tribal enrollment document or a tribal ID, and that's all you need to get started with this. I'm Samantha Turner, and I'm the Native Connections Project Coordinator. Today I want to tell you, and you probably already know it, that Tucson is beautiful and we live in a very special place called the Sonoran Desert. Here in Tucson, we are surrounded by four mountain ranges. The Tucson Mountains to the west, the Santa Catalina Mountains to the north, the Rincon Mountains to the east, and the Santa Rita Mountains to the south. We are among lots of trees, plants, flowers, cacti, animals, and birds. Getting outdoors is so important for your mental health, and it means to take a walk, to take a hike, to take a run, to ride your bike, play at a local park or playground, to smell the fresh air, and to feel the sun on your skin. Getting outdoors and being active can really help your mind, body, and spirit. And some ways that you can, that getting outdoors helps you include de decreasing anxiety and depression when you're feeling sad or overwhelmed. It improves your overall mood. It in reduces feelings of stress or anger. It gives you a, a time out from your screen from from your TV and to feel more relaxed. It improves your physical health. It improves your confidence, self-esteem, so, uh, pro problem solving skills and to be a better student. And it helps you to be more active. It gives you the opportunity to make new connections and it provides you the opportunity to make more friends. I've included a website on this slide and it's called alltrails.com and it's a place where you can go to to explore more trails in Tucson. Some places to get outdoors include the Loop Path, Tumamoc Hill, Mount Lemon, Reed Park, your local or favorite playground, Saguaro National Park, and Tucson Mountain Park. Getting outdoors, moving your body and your mind is can be really, really helpful. Smell the fresh air and feel the sun. Yes, I'm Chenevo. Greetings, my name is Angela Montiel and I work for the Tucson Indian Center as a youth and community health educator. As a health educator, my focus is to conduct activities related to substance abuse and tobacco prevention uh, among the Tucson urban Indian community. Today I will talk about the tobacco distinction and addiction and how it affects our bodies. Traditional tobacco. American Indians and Alaskan Natives have had the highest prevalency of cigarette smoking compared to all other racial ethnic groups in the United States. The objective our objective here at the Tucson Indian Center is to teach the difference between commercial and traditional tobacco. Traditionally, we've used, um, different tribes have used traditional tobacco in different ways from the Hopi using in ceremonies, weddings, funerals, um, also, for, also medicinal usages for traditional tobacco. Here in the illustration, um, we see that even though 
We are all from different tribes. We understand that tobacco is sacred and should not be abused. We respect each of our individual tribes usage and how they use traditional tobacco. Slide, we can see how the tobacco companies have aggressively advertised and promoted their tobacco, commercial tobacco products. Um, you can see that in Circle K's, in different, um, uh, at Walmarts, um, where they are heavily advertising and marketing to, um, to the community. So what's in a cigarette? So here we see different um, chemicals that are found in the cigarettes. Some that are that we might know that are more common, like carbon monoxide, which is released from car exhaust fumes, lead, tar, cadmium, found in battery acid, arsenic in rat poison, um, butane in lighter fluid, formaldehyde known as embalming fluid, acidic acid, um, an ingredient in hair dye an acetone in our nail polish remover, and ammonia, a common household cleaner. So this slide shows the different um, forms of tobacco, like e-cigarettes, juuling, vaping. So what, what is it? So e-cigarettes are battery-powered devices that heats liquid into vapor forming um, form of inhaling. Vaping is inhaling water vapor through a vaporized device like e-cigarette or a hoka pen. Hoka is a water pipe used in smoke, um, to smoke flavored tobacco. So these are just different forms of tobacco. Other forms of, of tobacco, um, commercial tobacco are smokeless tobacco, which is you chew, spit, or dip um, dissolvables. These are some of the uh, different forms of chew smokeless tobacco. Smokeless tobacco or chew? True or false? Chew spit tobacco is safer than cigarettes because you're not inhaling any dangerous carcinogen. Is that true or false? The answer is false. Smokeless tobacco products contain just as many cancer-causing chemicals as cigarettes do. Here's an illustration of what our Native Youth Coalition uh, made um, some time ago. Chew on this. So chewing tobacco causes cancer of the mouth, bad breath, hiccups, bleeding gums, sores in the mouth, dizziness, and a hairy tongue. So those are the long-term effects, of course, the hairy tongue and the, um, the um, sores in the mouth, cancer of the mouth. Jewels have become increasingly popular with our young people. These uh, jeweling devices are not safe. They are equivalent to a whole pack of cigarettes and this illustration um, um, gives you an idea of how if you smoke one little jewel pod, it's equivalent to a whole pack of cigarettes. They come in different flavors. It's more appealing to the younger generation. Blueberry, strawberry, mango flavor, cucumber flavor. Um, and so a lot of um, young people throughout the United States starting in 2015 and is becoming a top selling e-cigarette brand. So e-cigarettes, um, are not safe for young people. Although they're saying it's safer than cigarettes, it is very harmful to our health. It has volatile um, organic compounds, particulate um, ultra fine particles that can cause irreversible lung damage. Um, and so of course it has nicotine, which harms brain development which can remember the brain continues to be develop up to the age of 25. So young people who use e-cigarettes may be more likely to go on to use regular cigarettes and start the cycle of addiction. So this slide shows the uh, cycle of, of a nicotine addiction. So here it shows that ingest nicotine when you smoke and then this when it reaches your brain it releases these neurotransmitters in the brain which makes you feel good and then it when those nicotine blood levels fall you 
crave it again, you start wanting that nicotine again, and it goes around, and that is the nicotine cycle, uh, addiction cycle. So how does smoking affect our body and our health? So this slide shows the short-term health effects and the long-term health effects of smoking. So the short-term effects of smoking is in your brain, you get lightheadedness when you first take that first smoke. Um, you get maybe dizzy or lightheaded, um, aroused mental state. So your nose and your mouth um, irritates your throat, your airway. It dulls your sense of smell and taste, so you can't taste food as, as well or smell. It increases your mucus and phlegm. Um, and also in your lungs, it increases your respiratory rate and your heart and, and blood vessels. It constricts your blood vessels, which increases um, the pulse and your blood pressure, so high blood pressure. In your endocrine system, it increases your blood sugar levels, increasing production of adre adrenaline. And in your stomach, it suppresses appetite. For a lot of young women, they choose to smoke because it makes them not want to eat but it does have harmful effects to your health. Like muscle in, induces um, fatigue in your muscles, so tired muscles. The long-term effects are in your nervous system, addiction, of course, to nicotine craving. You start that cycle of addiction. And your skin, it um, stains your fingers and, and um, gives you access wrinkles so wrinkly skin so it makes you look older than you actually are in your mouth it increases your risk of gum disease it increases your risk of cancers so of the oral cavity meaning cancers of the mouth your throat your larynx and stained teeth in your respiratory system your lungs it increases your susceptibility to colds flus pneumonia asthma and because of covid now because of covid attacks COVID-19 attacks our lungs. And so a lot of people who were smokers have had a lot of complications um, with their breathing, with their lungs, um, um, greatly increases your risk of lung cancer. Um, like I said, emphysema and lung diseases. Um, in your cardiovascular system, it increases the risk of strokes and increases risk of heart, heart disease. And in your reproduction system for females, it can cause infertility. In pregnant women, it increases your risk of miscarriage, stillborns, and low birth weight of your babies. And then after the babies are born, um, they can, you know, be have asthma, um, susceptible to ear infections, and and other types of um, respiratory illnesses. The difference between traditional or sacred tobacco and commercial tobacco. So traditional tobacco, for many Native American communities, tobacco is a gift from by Creator, which is respected and honored. Um, it is used to give thanks to Creator, to honor all creatures, to seek protection and guidance, to convey gratitude and love and kindness. Um, and commercial tobacco is prepared commercially uh, commercially prepared in the form of cigarettes, chewing tobacco, snuff, or other forms that we talked about, like jewels, vaping, um, are very harmful to our health. The increase it increases our risk of cancer. It increases our risk of heart disease, strokes, and type two diabetes. So I would encourage those of you who who do smoke to quit today or seek help to quit or call the Tucson Indian Center if you would like information about how to quit smoking. Uh, we do have a Freedom From Smoking program that's available. Um, you can contact the Indian Center at 884-7131 and ask for uh, the Freedom From Smoking prevention. Um, also on our website, we do have a tobacco uh, prevention tab where you can register for our Freedom From Smoking classes, um, which are available um, virtually or in person. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Stella Taran. I'm the case manager here at the Tucson Indian Center. Um, I welcome er uh, each and every one that comes through our doors here at the Tucson Indian Center. And our mission is to, uh, here at the center, is to lead, service, and strength the uh, advocates for the people of the greater Tucson area for a special emphasis on the urban Native community. Purpose statement is the Indian Center delivers cultural and respectful and compassion and wellness of the social services. I work for the social services and what we help is all the Native Americans with the WEO program and the WEO program brings many jobs here to the area in Tucson Indian Center. All you have to come in and get registered and get enrolled with the Tucson Indian Center with social services. It's myself, Stella, Jerry, and Tiffany. If you can uh, give us a call and we will schedule an appointment with you or come to orientations on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. We also have job clubs that you can come. So because of a pandemic, it's been kind of hard. So if you call us the day before the activity, we will screen you and get you in as soon as possible. So I just want to thank each and every one for joining us here at the Tucson Indian Center. Thank you. As we're coming to the end of our virtual Women's Day event, I wanted to share some of the coming events that Tucson Indian Center has. The first one will be May 20th, 2021, and it's the World No Tobacco Day. And following that, the week of June 13th will be the University of Camp in the Box, which is catered to youth and their families. And following, we're also doing a Men's Day, which will be similar to Women's Day, and that will be June 9th, 2021. We also have some events coming up specifically for the youth, which is the Native Summer Youth Camp, um, which will be the summer of 2021, and our Back to School Bash, which will also be summer, summer of 2021. And these events, as usual, will be mentioned on our TIC Facebook and our TIC website. If you have any additional questions about these upcoming events, feel free to contact Tucson Indian Center and we will get you answers. I hope you all enjoyed the virtual Women's Day event and continue to stay safe and take care of your well-being. We hope to see you all soon. Thank you.